New Captain Scarlet would be Jerry Anderson's final television series, and his first to be fully animated in CGI, or hypermarionation. Enjoy the show, Scarlet. First airing in 2005, the series was a complete reimagining of his 1967 series Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons, and would ultimately be the only one of his classic shows he would get to remake. Fighting an enemy that we can't see. Or one that we can see but can't recognize. For the most part, the concept of the new show remained the same as the original. After a disastrous first encounter with an alien race living on Mars, global security organization Spectrum find themselves plunged into a war of nerves with the Mysterons. This is the voice of the Mysterons. Captain Scarlet and Black are killed and taken over by the Mysterons. But after a failed attempt to destroy Spectrum's aerial headquarters Skybase, <laughs> Captain Scarlet is returned to normal, with one notable difference. Captain Scarlet, you are virtually indestructible. Captain Black, however, is not so lucky, and neither are most of the people he encounters over the course of the show's 26 episode run. You could say I only wanted to grab your attention. As the Mysterons continue to kill and replicate human beings to use as agents in various plans to destroy humanity. They are an enemy that not only fights in the shadows, but marshals those shadows against us. But the war goes on, gentlemen, and we will win it. We must. Jerry Anderson had long been campaigning for the chance to remake one of his classic shows, and the success of the early 1990s BBC repeats of Thunderbirds, Stingray, and Captain Scarlet led to Carlton International Media asking him to explore the feasibility of recreating one for a 21st century audience. Spectrum were assembling their top agents at Cloudbase HQ for fresh conflict with the old enemy. Captain Scarlet was chosen to be the subject of a five-minute CGI test film, Captain Scarlet and the Return of the Mysterons, which entered production in January of 2000 at the Moving Picture Company in London. We are resuming our war of nerves. You will pay for your unprovoked attack on our people. Picking up several years after the events of the original series, the film told a brisk story of the Mysterons renewing their war of nerves against the Earth, and Captain Black's attempt to destroy an atomic power station with the help of a hypnotized Captain Blue. I will obey. Luckily, Scarlet is able to save his friend and thwart Black's plan, but the Mysteron agent escapes to strike another day. Relax, guys. Easily the most notable aspect of Captain Scarlet and the return of the Mysterons was the return of both Francis Matthews and Ed Bishop as Captain Scarlet and Blue. When do you think they'll make their first move, Paul? Very soon, Adam. You can be sure of that. The film was very well received by fans at conventions, and Anderson was encouraged to pursue the remake rights to continue with the project. And this is just the beginning. S.I.G. Rather than proceed with a continuation of the original series, however, the decision was made to produce a complete reimagining of the concept, and Anderson had the sad duty of informing Matthews and Bishop that their services would no longer be required. I guess that's enough excitement for one day. Instead, the new series, which entered production at Pinewood Studios' Kubrick Building in May 2003, would feature an entirely new cast and entirely new versions of all the regular characters from the the original series. I see. Along with a full redesign of all the classic Spectrum vehicles. Cloudbase was now Skybase, Spectrum's aircraft were named after birds, and their ground vehicles after fast animals. So where the hell is the Rhino? These new designs still retained the essential flavor of the originals, although the Spectrum Rhino would lose the infamous rear-facing seats of the original SPV. Earth will die a lingering death, piece by piece. A war of nerves. Is that what you mean? The Mysterons themselves were also refined to remove several of their most glaring weaknesses, such as their fondness for telling Spectrum exactly what their evil plan was every single week. Also, rather than killing somebody and then making a copy while leaving the body of the original lying around for anybody to stumble upon, the CGI Mysterons would tidy up after themselves by using the matter of the original victim to create the replicant. To actually see the Mysterons rebuild matter it's remarkable. 
The new series would also focus more heavily on the characters of the Skybase crew, as Captain Scarlet and Captain Black were more firmly established as mortal enemies. But we were friends once. We were best of friends. And now? best of enemies. As opposed to never actually meeting face to face in the original series. There is no need for you to see me. Their relationship was further complicated by Destiny Angel, who had been Captain Black's girlfriend before his death and now finds herself developing a relationship with Scarlet. Whatever makes you happy. The new Skybase crew were assigned all the familiar code names from the original series, even including the late Captains Brown and Indigo, although Dr. Fawn would now become Dr. Gold. Yes, sir. The most major controversial change to the regular cast, however, came with Lieutenant Green, who had been male in the original series, but would now be female in the CGI show. Like I never in all my born years. While some fans found this a difficult change to take, <laughs> It's important to remember that New Captain Scarlet was not a continuation of the original series, but instead a complete reimagining utterly separate from the world of its predecessor. The Supermarionation Green hadn't been killed or fired. No, but one more question like that, Lieutenant, and you will be. It was simply that in this new universe, the codename of Lieutenant Green had gone to an equally capable woman rather than a man. As ever, your assistance is invaluable. The production team evidently felt that the new Green had been a success, as halfway through the show's run, another codename held by a man in the original series would be given to a woman. Scarlet. It's Ochre. With the CGI Captain Ochre, the Captain Scarlet franchise had its very first female captain, and although the show made great use of Lieutenant Green and several of the Angels, having Ochre out in the field with Scarlet and Blue and holding equal rank was another big step forward. Yippee! Both Green and Ochre were among the new show's most popular characters, and were thoroughly in keeping with the progressive mentality that the original series had displayed towards equality of gender and ethnicity. Hmm. Although the gender swap issues do remain very controversial to this day, and you will almost certainly find some heated discussions in the comments below this video. Oh, great. And to those complaining there about forced PC diversity or similar tabloid slogans only extending in one direction, and why can't there be any male angel pilots, yes, new Captain Scarlet also included a male character training to fly an angel fighter. He died. Just call me Banana Fingers. Fortunately for anyone worried that those pesky women might be about to take over the world of new Captain Scarlet, the new Mysterons were also equal opportunities employers. In the original series, only three female Mr. On agents had ever appeared, but more than a dozen women would be taken over in the new series, along with Mysteronized children and Mysteronized animals. Hi, fella. What are you doing on your own? New Captain Scarlet also preserved the original show's cheerfully bloodthirsty nature, with scenes of human beings being killed and replicated that equaled and sometimes exceeded the violence of the Supermarionation show. Unlike the cold, emotionless zombie of the original series, the new Captain Black almost seemed to relish performing gangster-style executions when necessary. Perfect. Huh? Ah! Oh! What have you done? And even Scarlet himself wasn't above occasionally breaking a Mr. On's neck. I'd forgotten how incredible it was. New Captain Scarlet's CGI was continually refined and improved over the course of its 26 episodes. And while some of the facial animations and exterior environments didn't look 100% convincing even at the time, much of it still holds up really well today, particularly the aerial dogfights and many of the scenes set on Mars. Captain Scarlet, Destiny Angel, and the rest of the cast were recreated in CGI based on busts created by sculptors McKinnon and Saunders, which were then digitally scanned to create full computer models of the characters. 
Motion capture technology allowed for physical performances to animate the movement of these models, while sensors fitted to the faces of the voice actors allowed the characters' facial movements to match those of their performers. That was fun. The technology allowed the series to tell the kinds of stories that it wouldn't always have been possible to do with puppets, but which felt very similar to those seen in the classic TV21 comic strips. New Captain Scarlet and his colleagues were all frequently involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat, something their Super Marionation predecessors usually struggled with. <laughs> and faced off against whole armies of Mysterons, a shape-shifting Mysteron, and rampaging hordes of killer robots. Oh, nice. 21 of the show's 26 episodes were written by Phil Ford, which gave the program a consistent voice throughout, and even allowed for the occasional running subplot. I knew you were still in there. Most notably, the tantalizing revelation of dissent among the Mysteron ranks. As a species, the Mysterons are still individuals. And some of us don't believe in this war. Unfortunately, new Captain Scarlet would not be treated well in its country of origin. I despise it when humans do the Mysterons dirty work. Instead of giving the show the prestigious time slot it deserved, or even its own time slot at all, ITV instead chose to air it within the Saturday morning kids magazine show Ministry of Mayhem, hosted by Stephen Mulhern and Holly Willoughby. It's the world exclusive, it's incredible, we think you're gonna love it. Although Ministry of Mayhem itself appeared enthusiastic to be hosting the show at first, with Mulhern and Willoughby even appearing in Spectrum uniforms a few times, it soon became clear that the show was not a suitable home for new Captain Scarlet. A little bit too scary for you, wasn't it? Each episode would generally air around 11am, but would be chopped into two segments. Interrupted by some commercials and a few other tedious wastes of time back in the studio... I probably want a fondant fancy. Get out of the shot. ...before getting to the second half of the story. Something's gone very wrong. By airing the series this way, ITV essentially deprived new Captain Scarlet of its audience, since its name wouldn't appear in any TV listings, and ensured that any subsequent broadcasts would have to be considered repeats, even though the show had technically never had a proper premiere. Do you want to come with me? To make matters worse, just a couple of months after New Captain Scarlet premiered in the UK, another cult classic family sci-fi show from the 1960s would make a triumphant return to British television. Doctor Who. Saturday days at 7 on BBC One. The success of the new Doctor Who should have been a clear indication that audiences were receptive to a 21st century take on a nostalgic favourite. But sadly, ITV didn't get the message, and continued running new Captain Scarlet in the Ministry of Mayhem slot when the show returned for the second half of its run in the autumn. Oh, Stephen, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going! Oh! The episodes were broadcast without their closing credits, and from the episode Best of Enemies onwards, without even the opening credits, thus depriving almost everyone who'd worked on them of the recognition they deserved. Oh, for heaven's sake, Scarlet. And in one last indignity, the final two episodes were aired in the wrong order. Well, the last episode of Captain International sales of the series were difficult thanks to it having appeared to fail in its home market, and the show's merchandising soon found its way to bargain bins. Thank you for that. Anderson was bitterly disappointed with how the series had been handled, and one word he frequently used to describe ITV's treatment of the show was murdered. Do not miss Captain Scarlet today because it is the last in the current series and it is a good one. The final episode of New Captain Scarlet, Grey Skulls, aired on November 26th, 2005, and saw the series go out on a high. Is that guy nuts? No. Indestructible. But little did anyone realise at the time that this episode would be the very last Jerry Anderson production. It's time to be on my way. Although he had ideas for many more projects, some of which would come to fruition after his passing, it was announced in June 2012 that he had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and he would pass away in his sleep on December 26th the same year. Scarlet the Spectrum, I'm coming home. In the 15 years since it was first broadcast, New Captain Scarlet has managed to overcome the poor treatment it received on initial broadcast and find a new audience on DVD, Blu-ray and streaming services. 
so I guess that kind of clinches it. Although sometimes unfairly dismissed by some Anderson fans simply for being made in CGI, as if a CGI series somehow requires no work to create, many more who have since discovered the show have been surprised at just how well it holds up. I can't remember ever being more delighted to be so very wrong. Although it never received the chance it deserved, New Captain Scarlet was an exciting and action-packed series that went places the Super Mario Nation Scarlet could never go and proved that remakes can be worth doing if the core of what made the original series work is kept intact. And in this case, the heart of the original Captain Scarlet was very much alive and thriving in the CGI show. And I rather hope that was what you would say. Although Jerry Anderson's fondest and longest held ambition had been to remake Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet had long been almost as beloved with audiences worldwide. Now to cure my Scarlet fever. If Anderson's career had to come to an end, it was only fitting that it do so with a remake of one of his most popular shows. And and it's an enduring testament to his skill as a filmmaker that as a series in its own right, New Captain Scarlet was one of his finest achievements.